proud to be sponsored by Diamond Bright, the car care products that have been keeping the furious fleet looking their best for a long time already. To find all you need to keep your car clean and protected, follow the link below to diamondbright.co.uk. Welcome to Furious Driving, and this is my 1972 Rover 2000, the car I have owned longer than any other, and also a car that turned 50 years old at the beginning of the year, and because it was languishing here in the lockup around the corner, I completely forgot and I managed to miss that celebration. Now the reason it was languishing in here was because initially I was trying to change the engine mount rubbers, which are, well, not actually these things, but these are all I could buy, which I think are Mark 1 Golf, actually, but uh, no one made them, so that was what was being offered and you have to do a slight modification, but being out here with no power tools, it didn't work. And then I wound up having to do a massive extension lead from across the street to my friend's house, um, four extension leads or five extension leads long, um, to get a drill and an angle grinder because the bolt holding the engine in place just rounded out and broke. Uh, finally got that fixed and replaced it with hockey pucks. Uh, a mad idea, which actually seems to work perfectly. That brought me on to the second problem. The, the main reason it got parked up before the engine thing was the steering box is really heavy on left turns. Fine on right turns, very hard, hard on left turns. So I need to look into that once it's running, but it's not running because the wires going down to the starter motor seem to be a bit scrunchy. Um, so what you have to do is wiggle them around and then it will start sometimes. And as it's right underneath the exhaust manifold, that can be quite a painful experience. So what I'm planning on doing today is trying to get down to the starter motor, which is down there, pop the wires off and remake the connections. And hopefully that will give me a car that starts. I really do hope so. If it does start, then I can change the oil, change the coolant, and uh, maybe even run it up and down the drive a little bit, which would be rather amazing. This thing is 50 years old, so it's tax and MOT exempt. But even though it is MOT exempt, I will take steps to make sure it is safe. I'm not just gonna go blindly running a car that's been sat for two years up and down the road at 70 miles an hour. I will make sure it's working properly first, don't worry. I'm dumb, not stupid. Right, let's try and find the starter motor down there somewhere. Not that, that's the alternator. Don't make that mistake. Yeah, you don't do that twice. It's like the difference between flammable and inflammable. You learn that the hard way. Right, well, I do say it every time, but these Draper LED lamps are fantastic. They're also apparently white balanced for video, <laughs> which is nice. This is the full under bonnet one, which is super duper handy. And lurking here, so tiny that I've lost them underneath the exhaust and the carburetor, these magnetic cob lights are the best. They're on my Amazon affiliate store where you can find all the tools that I use. Um, don't have to buy anything, but clicking on it and having a look certainly does help a few pennies here and there to keep the channel going. Um, so what I'm looking at down here is this wiring to the starter motor. This cream wire appears to have some extra little plugs or sockets added into it at some point in the past and uh, they're breaking up. The wire is breaking up behind it so if I cut these out I should hopefully be able to get a starter motor that cranks over and then I've got a car that runs which will be a novelty. Now I think the hardest part here is not going to be fixing this wire but um, ah getting an angle where I can put my hand in and you can still see something. So basically I need to unpick all the tape off here, which I'm sure you can see my wrist now, nothing else, and then I'll get into the wire and see what I can do. I did bring like uh, ramps over as well, because I was half thinking I might need to go and do this one underneath, but hopefully, I ah, that would appear to be an issue. Yeah, that's, if you can see that, that, that just fell off the end there, that's, that's not ideal. That's significantly suboptimal. Okay. Okay. Bit of verdigris, bit of muck. Looks on much thinner wire actually, I wonder why. Okay, that's better. We've got a nice bit of clean copper there, that's a bit nicer than it was before. Right, because I'm basically Wiley Coyote super genius in disguise, I not only forgot my cup of tea, I also forgot my big box of connectors. The only thing I can find over here is a chock block, which is 100% not recommended for automotive use in the engine bay. But as I've got nothing else down here, I will put it in here just because it'll work for the moment. The best connector is sometimes the one you have in your hand. And working on that theory, I'm gonna use it just because it'll get the car running. And once the car's at home, which is not that far away, I can uh, make alternative arrangements. Oop. 
come back here so and so okay that one is now well temporarily repaired this one also has a massive kink in it and it does not move in an appealing manner either so let's change this one as well and see what we can do with that and then hopefully we've got a starter that does something right now i've got two extremely dodgy chop block connectors in there let's see if the car will now do a little crank for us right let's see if we have life oh no battery's not connected right let's see if we have life oh my word we do now this might need the jump pack it's been sat a while even though it's a new battery oh it always did crank slow right boost pack engaged hopefully get a bit more of a crank out of it this time right here we go come on car I know it's got petrol in because when I was trying to start it a couple of weeks ago I did put a couple of gallons of v-power in there and I also went to hell rigmarole of sucking fuel through which has tasted horrible I wonder if it's drained back and the mechanical pump isn't now getting any suction Ooh, oh god I'm still on fire am I on fire? what's on fire? I can see smoke but I can't see or feel anything hot that's probably not good what was making smoke down here? Oh, this wire is still cracked. Well, it's just a shrouding of it. That needs fixing as well. But what made smoke? That's really odd. Right, so I've now remade that wire, the top one. So I'm just going to give it a couple of cranks. Not going to expect it to start, but I just want to crank it and see if anything is getting hot. Uh, won't crank it long enough for it to catch fire because catching fire is never a good thing. Right, let's go and see if anything is warm over there. Ooh. No, nothing warm. Nothing warm. Nothing feels hot, which is a good thing. Okay, positive start. Back to the initial problem. No, there's no fuel in the pump. I'm going to have to do the whole suckety thing again, aren't I? Ugh. Didn't really fancy doing the old mouthful of petrol gubbins again. Oh, battery's gone flat. So I uh, hooked up the pump that I left over here. So see if we can suction some fuel through this way. Uh oh, it's not working. I have to do the old manual sucky thing. Yuck. There's nothing worse than the manual sucky thing. <laughs> Even just the fumes are disgusting. I'm getting nothing through <laughs> whatsoever apart from gas fumes. Start. I'm going to give it a quick squirt. This isn't starting fluid, this is just a flammable liquid. Let's see if it will just cough when I crank it. Because obviously we're not getting the fuel through. Let's look at that in a second. Oh, the MGT85 is flammable. It's not. It's not the best uh, loosener of stuck bolts. Maybe it's not a very good start fluid either. Mm. So basically, GT85, good for now. Right, I've just re-remade that first one I did because that was looking a bit shonky on that like cracked bit of plastic. So now we've got more plastic, more wires. Looking for any evidence of smoke or heat or fire in the engine bay. No, I think whatever I saw smoke from was either a spider catching fire or one of those bits of wire I just cut out. And I've used more chop blocks because I don't have the correct uh, crimpy thing. But I'll get these soldered once uh, the car is actually running in on the ground. On the ground. At home. It's on the ground already.
Oh, smoke, 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 smoke. I'm seeing smoke, but where from? From this side. Ah, yikes. The hell? Oh, it's the earth cable. The earth cable is almost on fire and it has melted through. Oh God, what's it melted through? The fuel line. Oh my God, that is really hot. Jesus, lucky enough fuel was coming through. Because the earth line actually has a holder in it for the petrol wire. Petrol wire? Petrol pipe. Okay, that's not correct English. That's really bad. Oh my God. Okay, we have an entirely new issue of which I was previously unaware. So why is that getting such a bad earth that that is literally red hot? Because that's going straight into the engine block just there and over to the engine mount just there. That should be absolutely fine. This is the factory position for it. Okay, uh, also I need to be remaking that uh, fuel line. Okie dokie. Well, today just got interesting, didn't it? So I'm gonna have to go off and find myself A, some fuel line, B, some fuel line connectors, and C, figure out why the earth is just doing terrible, dangerous stuff. Right, I'll be back in a moment. Right, okay, so you join me back in the lockup after a couple of days break because I had to order a new bit of pipe. Hmm. Excuse me, it is extremely warm out here. So, the old bit of pipe, as you had seen, had basically melted going through this little hoop on the side of the earth strap to the engine. Um, I could have, I suppose, extended that little bit of rubber down to the filter out to here, but I thought it'd be better to use the correct kind of pipe. So I had to go to Wins and get a second hand pipe and then convert the end over, take the olive off, the old one. In fact, I've got the old, in fact, no, I haven't. Well, this is, this is the melted through pipe. And this, I think, explains why I couldn't suck petrol through because if I had done that once before, it would have had a pinhole and it was getting no suction, just, just getting air through there. Um, so now I have got complete fuel line. That's good. I did also go and purchase a new earth strap, which I thought I brought over to the garage with me, but apparently I didn't. So for the moment, we're gonna live with the uh, current bad one. I've had a look at the connections on it. It is bolted down really firmly both ends. Um, I'm going to put something between that and that before I crank this again so we don't get more meltage. Um, let's see if I can now siphon some petrol through. Petrol is now in the filter and damn it, running everywhere. So that's probably good, I guess. The car now does have a fighting chance of actually starting. Ugh, stuff falling on the floor everywhere. Let's tighten this up quickly. I can taste petrol, which is lovely. At least doing it with a long pipe and a see-through bit in the middle, you can see when you've got to the point of having, I'm not gonna have a mouthful. And this is an old mechanical pump. And it does have a thing on the bottom. So I can hear dribbly noises, but I can't see anything actually happening. Oh, I am. I am not getting a good seal on that. Every time I pump it, I can see and hear bubbles and dripping petrol, so that's bad. So I think I'm gonna have to remake this joint. Because now I've got fuel running, that's just gonna, oh, it's just gonna gush. Of course it is. Brilliant. So I've got the choice of either petrol running out onto the floor at a huge rate, or I've got the, the option of no fuel coming through to the car and just bubbling just there at a tiny bit. So perfect. Right, so using extreme heat and violence and a little bit of sandpaper to smooth down the back of that olive because it looked a little bit rough, I've come back and opened the garage door and here it absolutely ponged of petrol now because quite a lot seems to have fallen on the floor, which is a bad thing, partly for safety reasons, mostly because the cost of the stuff these days if this now doesn't work, I know I should probably go and buy a new one from like Car Builder Solutions or somewhere, but what I'll probably wind up doing is loading it full of uh, instant gasket just to get it um, sealed up and stop it pouring petrol on the floor and then go and buy a new one later on. And there's nothing on the fuel tap that I can fix tight to brace against, so you have to just tighten it as much as you can without breaking anything. Oh, I can see fuel just 
seeping through a tiny bit. Yeah, I'm going to have to go and buy a new olive, I think, because that is not happy. Right. Sit rep. It's only seeping a tiny bit out of there, which means it should be drawing enough to actually run, even if it was dripping petrol dangerously. So I'm confused as to why the petrol isn't coming through. So I'm having a look at the fuel gate, the fuel pump, this mechanical little effort here, because I'm now concerned that the gauze, what do you want to call it? The, um, all right. I was worried it wasn't getting enough vacuum through. Um, but it sounds like it's doing pumping. I have had to change, I can't have changed the entire pump. I've certainly changed the, uh, the membrane bit that does the, the pumping in this more than one time. Um, but one time it's failing on the way out and it just conked halfway across a dual carriageway um, when I was making a right turn. I had to quickly jump out, pop the bonnet and pump this thing like this until fuel came through again and got it off the road. Ah, we now have fuel in the pole at last. Finally, I don't know if you can actually see this now. For the first time in a long time, this bowl is completely full. Thank goodness, just took a lot of manual pumping on there. And I've now got a full fuel pump at last. So that can now spill on the floor as much as it wants, <laughs> which I'm sure it will do. Okay, so I've got that fuel line separate from the uh, earth, so if that does get hot again, it won't be a problem. I did wonder, I did wonder if the reason it was getting so hot was just because um, I was cranking and cranking and cranking and cranking for a long time. I'm gonna go with that for the moment, which is the optimist in me rather than the realist. Let's give this a quick crank and then see if anything happens. Right, let's go with a really quick crank first of all. Need to fill the carburetors first of all, but also make sure nothing's catching fire. That's slightly warm, but nothing to be worried about. No more fluids on the floor than previously. Blimey, it's awake. It sounds pretty good as well, considering it's been sat for a long time. <laughs> it's alive! Oh, get a bit of rev is dying, it's dying, it's dying, I've lost the two there, I've lost the cables. Oh well, good opportunity to make sure nothing's on fire. Just dust motes in the air. Ha ha ha! Okay, let's give that one more try. Fabulous! Oh, that's so good! Have a quick look underneath here. Everything seems to not be on fire. That's really good. I like it when things aren't on fire. Only a tiny bit of seepage from that petrol down there. Nothing to panic about at the moment. Whoops. All looking good. In the hood. I reckon it can move for the first time on its own, own power in a really long time. Let's just move it up and out of the garage again once or twice. Just when things were going really well, I thought I'd better go and double check everything was all right. I gave this pipe a little wiggle, and what do you know, it came out of the olive yet again. So I'm gonna have to go and buy a new pipe. I mean, the pipe I got was a second-hand section of this particular black plastic fuel line, um, but it had a different fitting on it. It had like a, the female, and this is the, no, other way around, this is the female, and it had the male on it. Um, so what I'm gonna have to do uh, is I don't know find out where I can buy one of these pipes pre-made or a new olive and 
coupling thing on it from somewhere. I don't even know what it's called or what precise size it is to be perfectly honest. Um, so yes, issue, but at least the car runs. The car does start and it drove briefly so <laughs> and didn't catch fire. So yeah, next step, replace that yet again. Remake those wires when I get the thing at home and I've got access to a soldering iron and mains leads, power, that kind of stuff. Um, do a full service, new oil filter, new oil, change the coolant, um, do the brake fluid. I've not had a brake fluid flush in a really long time. And I remember one of the front brakes was a bit bindy as well. So I need to drive it around the block and work out which brake is binding and then replace that caliper and check that the... Um, uh, oh no, it wasn't, no. Thinking back, no, I was wrong. Oh, it's raining petrol. I need to go and stop talking to fix that. Okay, sit rep. The situation is pretty bad. I've taken the fuel pipe back off again and I cannot get the olive to go back on it again. I've managed to stem, stem the flow using the bullet connector on an old tail light. Um, however, I am standing in a puddle of petrol. Battery has been disconnected, so there's nothing in theory that should ignite it now. So it's perfectly safe, of course. Okay, panic broadly over. I've managed to get the olive back on there with the use of a mallet, a lump of wood, and a shoe. And so, uh, yeah, there's only a minor lake of petrol under the car. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna restart it at this point, but I do now know it will just fire up basically on the button, which is good news. Uh, so the car is effectively mobile again. This car is rather wonderful because it is 40 plus years old, which means it's tax free and MOT exempt. So in theory, I could just drive off right now and then explode and that's all on me. But I'm not gonna drive out and let it explode and be all on me. I'm gonna try and find either a pre-made or a replacement olive so I can redo that junction again because it's not leaking, but it is, it's seeping just a tiny, tiny bit. It's still full of fuel there, so it will start up again happily. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna walk away at this point. I'm basically just gonna walk away and let the fuel evaporate and hope no one lights a cigarette outside the garage. <laughs> right, so I'm gonna call it a day as far as this video is concerned. It's a 99% success. The engine now starts. The starter works again reliably as it should. The fuel line is no longer sucking air. It's just dribbling fuel on the floor. Um, and we know the engine just starts up like that. This always was one of those cars that just wants to work. Some cars want to live and this is one of them. So I'm really, really looking forward to getting this thing on the road. So, but before I do that, this oil in there is a couple of years old. So I'm gonna change the oil, obviously gonna change that fuel line and give it some more coolant because it seems to drop coolant on the floor again, quite an alarming rate. I think probably the hot earth strap was purely because I was cranking and cranking and cranking. Um, I'm gonna go with that theory. It means I'm gonna change anything. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this, please do hit like and the subscribe button is most important. And uh, yeah, I'll see me again next time, or as soon as I've managed to mail order some parts for this thing, getting it serviced, getting it running, and hopefully taking it for a drive again. Oh, that'd be nice. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.